Honduran elections of Sunday, November 29th, were unique in that they were less about who was going to win than they were about how many people were going to vote. Both major presidential candidates were supporters of the June 28th coup that ousted President Manuel Celaya and divided Honduran society. Meanwhile, the movement that rose in resistance to the coup called for a boycott of the polls. La democracia está destruida y en esta ocasión solamente va a ir a votar aquel que es partidario del golpe de estado. The coup government, not officially recognized by any country in the world, was hoping to gain international legitimacy by demonstrating a large turnout at the polls. and framing it as a referendum on the coup. They sought to increase turnout by suppressing the boycott movement, taking actions such as shutting down anti-coup media, violently breaking up marches, and threatening anyone advocating against voting with charges of terrorism. When the winner of the elections, Nationalist Party leader Pepe Lobo, delivered his victory speech on Sunday night, he stressed the significance of the turnout. Gracias también a los miembros de otros partidos porque con sus votos legitiman y dan valor a esta elección. Los comicios no solo más participativos, estamos hablando que el 62% de los hondureños fueron a las urnas. Fíjense bien. 10% más que el 2005 fueron a las urnas este año 2009. That 62% figure appeared at 10 p.m. on election night after the Electoral Tribunal's computer system broke down for three hours. Four days later, a spokesperson for the Electoral Tribunal spoke to the Real News in the lobby of the Marriott Hotel, where the election headquarters are located, where he informed us that the projection had gone up. Eh, creemos que va a, a, a llegar casi a los 3 millones de, de electores. ¿Qué representa cuánto porcentaje? Que, que representa aproximadamente un 65% del padrón electoral. But on the other side of the M16 wielding soldiers guarding the tabulation center, there was a shocking surprise to be found. Right there on the big screen was the percentage of national voter participation, 49%. To confirm, the Real News asked for a printout of the national results to date, and again, there it was, 49.2%. I then sought out the man in charge of the count, Leonardo Ramirez Parada, an engineer with 30 years experience in election tabulation. Bueno, son las cifras que ustedes ven ahí en los, en los pizarrones que anda del orden del 50% la participación de la población. Se puede variar. Puede variar eso, puede mejorar todavía más porque falta explotar una cantidad importante de, de actas, pero en este momento la cifra que se está mostrando ahí es ese es el orden de, de participación. So where did the 62% number come from? A high-ranking official at the Electoral Tribunal told me off camera that the president of the tribunal, Saúl Escobar, on the night of the election, announced the number out of nowhere. When I asked the official to say that on camera, they responded, do you really want me to get shot? The coup regime's announcement that more than 60% of Hondurans voted on election day has been enough to drastically change the dynamics of the situation. Governments that previously stated the elections were illegitimate now consider them a triumph. Canada's assessment is that the November 29th elections were conducted in a relatively peaceful and orderly manner. We believe that despite less than ideal circumstances, the voter turnout was significant and the margin of victory unambiguous. Canada is particularly pleased that no major incidences of violence have been reported. That is our reading of the situation. That is our assessment of the reality. But who is on the ground double-checking that reality? All the world's major election observation teams, the United Nations, the European Union, the Organization of American States, and the Carter Center, refused to participate. Only the Honduran organization, Agamos Democracia, collected significant election data, 
That organization was trained and organized by the National Democratic Institute, which is funded by the U.S. government and affiliated with the Democratic Party. Agamos Democracia found a 47.6% participation rate over its sample of 1,000 voting tables. But instead of blowing the whistle, the NDI neglected to mention this 15% discrepancy in their preliminary report on the election. They declared the elections to be orderly and peaceful, also making no mention of the brutal attack on peaceful protesters by security forces in downtown San Pedro Sula, an event that two NDI delegation members were witnesses to. What, te what testimony did you guys receive? Excuse me. What, te what testimony did you receive? The NDI also admits in the report that they weren't in the country long enough to call themselves an observer mission under international standards. In fact, under international standards, which require extensive pre-election observation, there were no legitimate international observers in Honduras for the election. But despite the lack of credible international observation, the world's largest media outlets have praised the election. A New York Times editorial on Saturday began with, there is wide agreement that last week's presidential election in Honduras, won by the conservative leader Porfirio Lobo, was clean and fair. While editorials like this one in the Miami Herald gave their interpretation of the government's falsified turnout claims, saying, the turnout of more than 60% signals that most Hondurans were unwilling to heed the call of ousted President Manuel Celaya, who had called for a boycott. That, along with an absence of reported irregularities at the polls and a generally peaceful atmosphere around the country, helps to make the case that the results of the election should be respected by other countries. Armed with precisely this voter turnout number, many countries are starting to do just that. No ailemos a Honduras, a su pueblo, que ha manifestado en las urnas su voluntad de avanzar y dejar atrás el quebrantamiento. Esa es la única salida, la escogida por el pueblo de Honduras. Cualquier otra posición en contra de las elecciones es sofocar esa salida. Most of the South American countries, including Argentina, Brazil, and Venezuela, maintain their stance of non-recognition. Estrategia que tiene como objetivo asegurar que las fuerzas que comandaron el golpe contra el gobierno del presidente constitucional Zelaya se mantengan gobernando Honduras. Objetivo que de ninguna manera mi gobierno va a aceptar. Reconocer al señor Lobo significa para Bolivia reconocer a Micheletti. Reconocer un posible gobierno así conformado significa reconocer elecciones que fueron administradas por el golpismo. Significa aceptar que estas fueron limpias, que no hubo fraude y que no hubo abstención. Reconocer al señor Lobo significa que habríamos confiado en quienes habiendo impactado el 28 de junio con las, de, con las armas contra la democracia, El 29 de noviembre súbitamente se convierten en demócratas y administran o permiten elecciones libres. The United States confirmed its November decision to recognize the winner of the elections. The Supreme Electoral Tribunal, the TSE, and the Honduran people conducted remarkably free, fair, and transparent elections November 29th for new leadership, and they deserve our congratulations. While the numbers are not final, Nearly two-thirds of registered voters living in Honduras cast their ballots. A rate the misreported figure has had resounding effects domestically as well. When the National Congress voted in a landslide on Wednesday, three days after the election, not to reinstate President Zelaya to serve out the last two months of his term, many members of Congress referred to the turnout numbers in order to substantiate their support for the coup. De que estas elecciones se realizaron de una manera masiva. Por primera vez me tardé casi dos horas en votar por la cantidad de gente que había. Y eso solo se debe a que el pueblo quería mandarle un mensaje al mundo. News that the 62% participation rate was fabricated will come as no surprise to the many Honduran radio correspondents who reported on empty voting booths across the country on Sunday. The Real News visited one of the largest voting centers in San Pedro Sula during the vote count. Not a single election observer was present at any of the 21 voting tables, and the poll workers reported very low participation. They voted in this urna. 105. 105 people voted, and how many registered? 340. 
340. Ok, de 340 electores que estaban en esta urna, solo 119 se presentaron. De 340 y votaron 128 personas. De 108 personas. ¿Votó? De 340. De 340 116. votaron 116 personas. De 120 personas. ¿Sobre cuánto registrado? Sobre 340. Gracias. Que 111 corresponde como al 33%. After visiting all 21 polling tables, the average participation at that center was 37%. The next day, the mainstream newspapers reported that the residents of San Pedro Sula, quote, flooded the ballot boxes. For the coup resistance, which said all along that the results were going to be fraudulent, they are more shocked at the acceptance by the international community of an even bigger lie that the elections were orderly and peaceful, words that have been reiterated by governments and media around the world. The facts are that these elections took place with the elected president surrounded by military inside a foreign embassy, under a coup government that has effectively denied the basic human rights of many of its citizens based on their political views. They've denied freedom of assembly through the violent breakup of peaceful demonstrations, denied freedom of the press by closing and seizing the equipment of the few media outlets that aren't owned by coup supporters, denied freedom of expression by arresting people for the content of their words, and created a culture of fear through targeted torturing and assassination of anti-coup leaders. A culture made acutely worse in the days immediately prior to the election when the military sent a letter to all the mayors in the country asking for names and contact info for all the members of the resistance in their municipality then calling in the army reserves for election day. The facts are, these elections were neither clean nor peaceful. Reporting from Tegucigalpa, Honduras for the Real News Network, this is Jesse Freeston.